Well, I haven't been making too many videos on my uh, 28 day sabbatical. Yes. Well, I had a couple of interesting days here recently. Uh, I think I told you in the last video, you, you know, your sense of independence and freedom, at least for me, is sort of stripped. They, they, they just have all these rules and the things that I enjoy doing to keep myself sane and not allowed here. But, as I usually do, I try to figure out ways to maintain some source of independence, which repeatedly kept failing. So, I wanted some bug spray, I wouldn't give me that. Anyway, I'm not going to go into all that. But one thing that got under my skin, Apparently it's a new epidemic with young people and their addiction to their phones which leads them to be addicted to online gambling. So we had four addicted gamblers when I got here. They've all since the last one left today. And then they just shipped in four more, all of them in the age of 24. So this one kid, I mean, he was so hooked, he just could not put his phone down. And, uh, move over here a little bit. Hang on. started getting irritated because you know, no one was paying attention to them. Kids texting and distracting all the other patients. Uh, so they made a rule that every time you go into group of therapy, you got to put your phone in this community basket, cut it off, put it in the basket. So I did it two or three days, but after every therapy, I forgot I put my phone in the basket. I might walk all the way across campus and go, oh shit, I have to walk back. So, I don't know, I just, I, this, is, this is fucking stupid. We're all adults here. And we just cut our phone off and secure it. Pay attention to what we're supposed to pay attention to. Not everyone should suffer because of one idiot 24 year old. So I started put my phone off. I, I asked the therapist, I said, look, I'm going to cut my phone off, turn it upside down, and put it in front of me so I don't forget it. No way I had a problem. The therapist you know, said, that's fine. Uh, no problem. Got a little sense of control and independence, which we don't generally get around here. Um, so then I decided it would be better if I just cut my phone off and zipped it up in my backpack, which I started doing. Again, no issue. Uh, the day before yesterday, maybe Friday of last week, there was a young therapist who came in. I was one of two people, and it was early. I said, are you starting the session? And she said, yeah. So I started cutting my phone off, stuck it in my backpack, and started zipping it up. And she's like, no, you need to put it in the basket. And I was like, you know, why? I said, it's all, it's secure, it's not distracting. And she said, well, that's the rule. I said, well, you know, you can use some discretion because it hadn't been an issue with the past eight counselors. And she wouldn't let up. She 
wouldn't de-escalate. She wanted to make an issue out of it. People were coming in. And I was just getting pissed off. And uh, I got a little, I, I mean, I was hot. She said, will you please, are you going to put your phone in the basket? I said, oh. All right. Got about three feet away and threw it in the basket. And I said, the point of this basket is for us to give you our undivided attention. I don't see how being secured in a zipped up backpack is any worse than that basket. I said, I think you're missing the point. She just looked at me stupid. But that caused a big stir. I think it was a big stir. I mean, everybody kind of backed off a little bit. And, the counselors weren't making an issue out of it, and all the uh, responsible patients, the mature patients, secured their phones, put them in their purse or pockets. It's just a non-issue again. You know, so as I said, we shipped off the last of the four gamblers, and four more come in, all 24 or younger. And after all that shit and aggravation, of course, one of them is sitting there on his phone through the whole session, texting and typing and buzzing, and you know, everybody's getting pissed off. I didn't want to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm five or six days from leaving here, and I just don't want to be pissed off all the time. So I told the next counselor, I said, look, these, these new guys, using the phones and I just I don't want to get into it so you make an announcement and I'll put my fucking phone in the basket <laughs> piss me off Rose. but the other interesting thing is they did two tests on Monday no what is it Tuesday one was for OCD. And I took the OCD test and they scored it. And then the guy was reading, you know, he was a psychologist or whatever. And he said, well, you have, you have the traits of OCD, but you're right on the line, so it's not enough to diagnose you. Said, okay, well, at least I... I know where I stand. I got something to go on. Uh, so a couple of hours later, they did an autism spectrum test uh, called RADS. RADS dash R, I believe is what it's called. Eighty questions. I took the test. The girl who I like a lot, really enjoy her counseling and her just her advice and companionship. Uh, she scored it, and she was like, "Well, you know, there's like five subsections to this test. I guess 20, 40, 60, 80. If I'm not mistaken." And she says there's a very high evidence, there's high evidence to support that you are on the autism spectrum. Yeah. Well, great, you know, I wish that I'd known that 50 years ago when I was in first grade, but uh, <laughs> I guess it's better to know now than never. Um, so when I get out of here, I gotta have a, like a full sight test or whatever to see exactly where I range in the autism spectrum, which stands to reason, you know, Sayer and, you know, they made us do like a family tree and there's all sorts of, some autism and dyslexia and random stuff on my father's side. Uh, anyway, it, it explains a lot, I guess my 
aversion to loud noises and crowds and multi-stimulus and being too close to people and kind of cringing with hugs, all that kind of shit adds up, I guess, now. But that was an interesting little tidbit. So, I think we're going to pursue... Oh, they got some other random test. And... Whatever. <laughs> I'm ready to get the hell out of here. If I had made all those promises to you know, my wife and kids and family, I'd have left, I know, at least a week ago, if not earlier. I was kind of losing my shit. I'm, st I mean, I'm still like, I can't do anything around here. And apparently this is the most liberal place on the East Coast, so I'll count my blessings, I guess. But yeah, looking forward to getting home and trying to pick up some of my old relaxing habits, flint napping and bow making, and get started on the addition. I hope that that thing's finally ready. But we'll see how it goes. Today's, what is today, right? Thursday? So, five and a half days. And I'll be out of here. Of course, I gotta turn right around and start another aftercare treatment plan. And they wanted me to do this thing they call IOP. And they're really pushing it. And I finally told, this was two weeks ago, I told my case manager, I said, look, I said, I'm not, I said, I'm not close-minded to it, but currently, based on what I'm seeing and hearing, I am not doing this IOP. Uh, because it's three hours a day, four days a week. Um, I think it's, starts at 6 30 so about the time you get home from work and try and have family time you're in this IOP uh, intensive outpatient I don't know what it's doing some acronym I'm not doing it I'm getting my own personal private you know therapist and my family physician and I'm going to rely on them and follow what they say because apparently if you have to pay out of pocket the IOP is a little over two thousand dollars a week and if you pay with insurance I'm sure it's more like thirty five hundred dollars a week because they can pack on extra um, you know but the therapist we got is 150 bucks a session even if it's four days a week it's not two thousand um, dollars so that's what I'm doing but they you know even after I, I told them I wasn't doing it I said I, the other thing I said is you know I don't need to go each individual counselor eight sessions a day and every single one of them try and cram this IOP down my throat. I've told you, you're my case manager. I've told you my position. I'm not completely closing it off. Maybe at the end of my 28 days, I might have a change of mind, but for right now, I don't want to hear about it anymore. She said, okay, I'll let everybody know. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't stop. This week, I think I'd made an, enough smart comments and kind of enough body language where I went into an aftercare session today and I was I was going to ask the woman a question and she said, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And I was like, I'm not going to do what? She says, I'm not going to ask you about IOP. I was like, oh, well, that's not what I was going to ask you, but thank you. But apparently words got around, so they're going to leave me alone, I hope, before I blow another gasket. Anyway, not much of a video, but that's that's the interesting news. Uh, and apparently autism spectrums, OCD is OCD. 
flat. But autism mimics um, shit. Mimics OCD. It disguises itself as OCD, which causes a lot of misdiagnosis. Hence the need to get further testing when I get out of here to actually find out exactly where I am and what I need to work on. And the literature, Angela found some stuff and sent it to me. It's like uh, adult adults that get diagnosed later in life with o o shit. Autism spectrum. Two out of three are addicted to something because which I can relate to you know you're constantly you, know, you spend your whole you spend basically your whole life being irritated by something that you really can't control be it noises or lights or um, crowds or I mean you name it there's so much shit that now that I think about it that just is constantly under my skin and because it's undiagnosed and nobody really understands you drink yourself into a state of you self-medicate just to get your head to where you're not insane or <laughs> irritated all the time sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but anyway Five and a half days. Hopefully I'll get home and pick up a bunch of rocks and some arrows and whatever instead of a glass and start my recovery. So, wish me well. I'm sure I'll see some of you soon. Not too soon, because I don't like being crowded. <laughs> Alright, see ya.